All right, so I'm resolving forces into its components. Again, we're gonna do a little bit of extra stuff here. Uh, read the question. In a science lab, a one kilo mass is suspended by two strings. Here are my two strings, string one, string two. Uh, they, these must be like supports of some sort. Here's my one kilogram mass right here. The tension forces in string one and string two are tension force one and tension force two, respectively. All right, first step. Draw a vector diagram showing all three forces acting on the mass. So take a moment, and then we'll take a look at what that vector diagram might look like. Vector diagram, uh, this is our one kilogram weight. There is tension here. There is tension here with the strings, and there is a weight uh, acting upon it. Okay, so there's our vector diagram. Uh, three forces acting on it. Let's keep going. So by resolving the vectors into I and J components, find the magnitudes of tension one and tension two respectively. All right, so let's take a look. Tension one is going to be equal to tension one in the I component, but it's a string that's going straight across. So there's no tension in the J component. All right, so pretty straightforward so far. Now, the second string, we need to use a little bit of our um, trigonometry again. Tension two is gonna be equal to tension two cos 138 in the I. Now, why 138? Because we measure our angle from the positive direction of the x-axis. So there's 138 right there. All right, so that's where we get 138 from. Cos 138 in the I component and sine 138 in the J component. This T1, this sorry, this T2 here, that's the magnitude of the tension there. And so what we're doing is breaking it up into its X component and into its Y component. So we need to know the magnitude there. All right. We have a third vector here we have our weight vector and you can see it's going straight down so what that means is that our weight vector is going to be zero in the i component because it's not moving left or right and it's going to be negative one g in the j component now the one comes from the weight of the object uh, we can use our little thing here force equals mass times gravity okay so it's one, now gravity is 9.8, uh, negative 9.8. Gravity is, is pulling downward, so it's negative 9.8. So what we get now is just uh, the weight component is negative gj. Now, looking at our picture again, this weight's not going anywhere, it's suspended. So these forces, the resultant of those forces is zero. So we can say that R equals T1 plus T2 plus W, and the resultant is zero because our mass isn't falling, it's not floating into the air, it's not moving left or right. So T1 plus T2 plus W equals zero. Now let's put in what we know. So we can now say that zero I plus zero J, because there's our resultant, um, resultant vector, is equal to, now, T1 in the I component, so it's equal to that. We're not going to need anything for the 0J. It's equal to T2, which is T2 cos 138I plus T2 sine 138J minus GJ. And now we can add those components together. So we've got two I components. We've got tension 1 plus tension 2 cos 138 equals I. And we've got tension 2 sine 138 minus G equals j. All right, and then we just need to break them up. So our i component, we can say that zero equals, uh, no, actually, let's do our j component first. We can say that our j component is zero equals tension in two sine 138 minus g. That's tension in two sine 138 minus 9.8, Rearranging this, we'll get 9.8 equals tension 2 sine 138. So tension 2 equals 9.8 divided by sine 138 
tangent 2 equals 14.6 newtons. So what does that mean? Scrolling back. Fourteen point six newtons. That's tension two. All right. We can do the same for our second string here. So we can say that in the I component, in the I component now, zero equals uh, T one plus T two cos one thirty eight. Rearrange, rearrange, rearrange. T1 equals 10.9 newtons. All right. So what do we know so far? Let's look back at what we had. Tension 1 equals tension 1 in the I component plus that. So now we know that this first vector is simply 10.9 I. Uh, looking at this next one, we know that tension 2 equals tension 2 cos 138i. So we know what tension 2 is, 14.6. So we can put 14.6 into here and here, and we'll know what our tension 2 vector is in terms of i and j components. And finally, we always knew about this weight component. It's simply negative g. Okay. So you can see here we are. Do, do, do. Oh, actually, don't worry about this. This is an alternative method of calculating those same ideas. So now we have, let's see what we were first looking at. By resolving the vectors into I and J components, find the magnitudes of term one and term two, or tension one and tension two respectively. We've done that now. I'll just sort of zoom out on that a little bit. All right, we only need to go about that far. Make sure that you've looked at that. Make sure that you understand what's happening there. Basically, the thing's not moving. We can take the three vectors and add them together to equal zero. And then it's a matter of rearranging for the I components, rearranging for the J components.